it's, it's a really scary thing. And sometimes because we're creative people and a lot of creative people don't also have that like business mindset, you know, it's hard to be both. If you know these things and you set yourself up for success, it could be awesome. But if you don't know Mm -hmm. those things, um, you could get yourself into trouble and spend a lot of money. Um, and then also be just really discouraged to ever try again. Hey, I'm Becca with The Happy Ever Crafter, and this week I'm talking to Emily Arbor of Cheerfully Made, who is walking us through five things to know about wholesaling your product. So if you have a handmade product and you've been thinking about trying to get it into stores, this episode is going to be so, so helpful for you. So let's jump right in. Emily, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. I'm so excited to finally meet you in person. Yeah. Well, not well, in person. In person. <laughs> This is just how we do it now. Yeah. Um, I honestly, I, I know I have some audience that's Ottawa based or like Ottawa area based. And I feel like for most of them, this is like a celebrity sighting. Oh, like I have it. a celebrity on it. No, but it's true. Like you have a super <laughs> reputation in the crafty world in Ottawa. Thank and you. so, yeah, so I'm so excited to have you on here. And for people who aren't in Ottawa, just know that Emily is an Ottawa celebrity in the craft world. (laughs) Um, So speaking of that, actually, before we get into all your lesson and everything, can you give us like the Coles notes of what I can try. <laughs> what's happening? Yeah, <laughs> sure. Yeah. So um, I grew up in Elmont, which is like a little town about 30 minutes west of Ottawa. And when you start with when I grew up, I guess that doesn't sound like it's going to be a short story. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I'll just fast forward. Um, basically, I'm the owner of a little shop called Cheerfully Made Goods and Markets here in Elmont. It's so little, cute. Thank you. It's a little brick and mortar shop that features all handmade goods, mostly Canadian, mostly local. And it is like a brick and mortar extension of a craft show series that I've been running for 10 years um, called Cheerfully Made Markets. And we have four shows a year. I host two of them in Elmont and two of them in Ottawa. And I'm also the Etsy team captain for Ottawa, which means I put on any Etsy events in the area. Um, And most recently, I started actually working um, as a freelancer for Etsy, just um, part-time, like 20 hours a week as a seller development specialist. So I basically go across the country doing little Etsy info night pop-ups with uh, successful sellers in those, whatever city center I'm in at the time. And we do little Etsy info nights and I look for new sellers who are not on Etsy and give them some tools to get on there. So that is sort of me in a nutshell. And I recently started um, creating some like educational tools for makers as well. Yeah. So, and that's why I had messaged you and said, like, I need to have you on the show because you were posting, like, I already knew all, I knew your story. I've been to your markets. Like I, I knew who you are. The, obviously. the admiration is mutual. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you posted about this new course that you, you were writing or you had written and it's mm-hmm. ready now. Um, and it's about wholesaling, which is such an interesting, it's, I love that that's the course that you wrote because you have such an interesting, um, angle on it as Mm -hmm. a shop owner and someone who's been doing that for so long, but also like knowing and meeting all the makers and working with them and seeing like the journey that they go through from like just starting and having their first product to trying to get it into stores. Yeah, totally. So I guess my like main question is, do many of your craft show sellers that you meet, like do many of them also do wholesaling and want to be in stores or is it kind of like one or the other? How does that journey? Um, What was happening is that people were approaching or shop owners are starting to look at craft markets for um, new product lines and, and to be able to say like, oh, we carry a lot of locally made stuff and they're approaching makers and they're not the makers are really, really flattered and excited to be in the shop, but they're not quite prepared. So yes, I would say, I don't, I couldn't even really give you a percentage, maybe 20, 15, 20% of makers at my markets are now wholesaling um, their stuff. And it is totally possible, but it's not just something to jump into willy nilly. And I was getting asked a lot about how to do it and um, and doing a lot of one-on-ones. And as you know, that just gets kind of like it's hard you can't help everybody Mm -hmm. just don't there just isn't enough bandwidth so that's sort of why I started to create this course and what I'm finding is that people really need it I'm meeting a lot of people who are like just diving in head first and being like I'm gonna have a handmade business and I'm gonna look I'm you know they do craft shows but then they dive into this wholesale and they're like they're literally losing money so 
anyway, it was just kind of freaking me out. And I was wondering if this was like a bit of an epidemic that people don't know where to get the information on how to do this because but on handmade stuff, there's just not yeah. that much of a margin. So people are getting themselves into some trouble. And I, and I thought I could help them by creating this course. Yeah, I love that. I can actually, I can actually uh, attest to not having any idea what you're doing and then getting sort of screwed. Um, mm -hmm. I, I, I had never actually entered a craft show, but at one point I decided that it would be smart for me to print a bajillion cards with my writing on them and um, mugs and yeah. glassware and all this stuff. And uh, I still have boxes and boxes oh. of it in my storage unit that I don't know what to do with. Maybe because, I could sell them for you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, if you want them, they're yours. Um, but I actually like, you know, I I printed them and had them all made thinking that this was a great idea before I did any research into mm -hmm. how this actually works and like what the options are for wholesaling. Like I didn't even yeah. know what all the, you know, all I, I didn't know the jargon. I had to like Google mm -hmm. everything and then also at the same time try and approach shop owners with like, the right kind of offer so they thought I knew what I yeah. was doing and it just was a disaster like I'm not gonna lie and I spent a ton of money printing it and having all the product and now I still have it so yeah. I love that you're writing this course well, and you can I think help it's people such avoid a, that. yeah I think it's 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 a really scary thing and sometimes because we're creative people and a lot of creative people don't also have that like business mindset you know it's hard to be both yeah. I was blessed with both sides of that brain. <laughs> so I, and my, my background is more in business than it is in creative. So I feel like if you know these things and you set yourself up for success, it could be awesome. But if you don't mm -hmm. know those things, um, you could get yourself into trouble and spend a lot of money. Um, and then also be just really discouraged to ever try again. So you could still probably do it, Becca. <laughs> <laughs> Whether or not I want yeah, to, I don't know, but, do. I <laughs> um, but yeah, so like you said, you're, you have five things to know before getting into all of this stuff, which I think is like such a yeah. valuable resource in itself. This will give people kind of an idea whether or not they even want to do it. Right. So I think I'll just get my face off of here and let you take it away. But before I do, I know you have a freebie for people so they can follow along, right? Yeah, exactly. Because I, I have, I anticipate just going off the rails. So I put it into a <laughs> digital form. Okay, perfect. And yeah, I'll link to that down below so people can just easily click on it and follow okay, along. Awesome. Thank you. Okay, cool. Let's get into it. So the first thing that I think um, a lot of people might not be aware of is that when you get into wholesale, you're about to take a pay cut. You're about to take about a 50% pay cut because to wholesale your products means that you're selling them um, for about 50% off of what you sell at shows and online. So if you haven't already set yourself up um, to have that retail pricing, then you may not have the margins available in your product. So consignment is a totally different story and we're not going to get into that right now, but um, shop owners purchasing wholesale need that margin to cover costs like overhead and for their debit machine and different fees and for their staff and for their electricity and their rent and all those things. And, and sometimes what I hear from makers is that they're shocked that, that they would need a 50% margin um, to give to the retailer, but that's just the reality of wholesaling. So that's a, that's a really important thing to know. Emily, can you just touch quickly on um, what the margin is? <laughs> no, actually, well, maybe, yeah, you could touch on that too, but I was going to say like, so one of the things that really, uh, like I actually had no idea about, which is sort of embarrassing now was the difference between wholesale and consignment. Yeah. Um, sure. so can so, you just like briefly give us that? Yeah, totally. So wholesale is when you sell a retailer, your product and they own it. So you sell it to them for a price. They mark that up generally by two and they resell it. Consignment is when you don't get, you give the shop your product, but you don't get paid until after it sells. And that's usually a smaller, um, you get a bit more of the cut because you're assuming all of the risk, basically. The, the retailer isn't assuming any risk. Um, but there are lots of reasons why I'm not a huge fan of consignment. Um, there's a lot of gray area as far as like, what happens if an item gets damaged or broken or dusty or stolen? Um, is the retailer very good at paying out at the end of every month. Many shops are not. It takes a lot more organization. Um, my preference would always be to just like sell it, have, you know, get that cash, put it back into to creating more product and move on. So, um, so essentially that's the difference. And okay. what I mean by margin is for instance, um, is how much money can be made on the product. So, 
um, we're going to get into it a bit more as far as like what your cost should be, what a whole co a wholesale cost should be and what a retail cost should be. But those are those areas in between are the margins there. Um, so the thing with a lot of people think like, why would I want to wholesale when I'm taking such a huge cut? And my feeling is, is that this is like the long game. This is like the business. It's not, um, it takes as much energy for me, for example, to sell 48 candles as it does for me to sell one at a craft market. This is like behind the scenes, um, putting orders together, moving larger quantities for a lower amount, but it's the momentum um, that you get and also the reach. Like I can, I'm limited by my, by um, geography when I'm selling at craft markets and the number of people that are coming into the, into the shows. Whereas if I'm selling wholesale, my stuff could be sold all across Canada and reaching all those different markets. Um, so that's the first thing that you need to know. Um, so if your prices are set so that there is no room for you to take a cut in your profit, just don't do it. Like you, you don't, there are some products that are not going to be a good fit for wholesale, but here's the basic wholesale math. So if the product you're making costs say $20 in materials um, and you need to include your labor in this, which is something, you know, I, I'm having just written this course, I'm like, I, I don't want to over, I don't want to talk too, too much because there's so many parts of every segment. So I'm going to try to keep it keep it short, but, um, well, and we, I just want to quickly, like, we didn't even mention at the beginning that <laughs> your course is available. So I'll link to it down below if people <laughs> okay. want to get like really deep. Sure. I, yeah, that, that would be great. Um, but like, I feel like it's another epidemic is that we just really, either we don't pay ourselves at all, or we really undervalue what our time is worth. So that's a whole, that's a whole other topic is paying yourself what you're worth. But so say your product costs $20 in material and labor um, then you multiply by that by two to get whatever you're going to wholesale it for. So then you wholesale your product for $40 and then the retailer retails it for $80. So a lot of people are going to be like, gulp, like there's no way I'm going to be able to sell this, what I was considering a $20 product for $80, which is when I go back to saying like, it's okay not to wholesale your stuff if that's where it's at. But I, I would, um, if you're really set on making it happen, I really recommend taking like a deep dive into your materials. Like, are you purchasing your materials at bulk? Are you registered as a business so that you can, you can purchase things at a wholesale cost? Um, are you making your stuff in a way that is like sustainable and almost like assembly lineable? Um, there are just so many things to consider to decide if, if this is, if this is the way you want your business to go, or if this is truly just like a creative passion that you're happy, not really profiting from. So I think that's people, what they don't understand is the reality of it becoming like a business and not just a hobby anymore, you know? So if it's going to suck the joy out of creating, then, um, I feel like I'm getting really negative. <laughs> It'll get better. I promise. But, um, so what I was saying earlier is it doesn't necessarily need to be like your whole line. You could rethink what it is that you're wholesaling. So for instance, if you're like a super detailed, like watercolor hand letterer and your originals maybe aren't very well suited to wholesale because of the amount of time that you're taking with them, could they be turned into prints or greeting cards or like you were saying earlier, like mugs or glassware, that kind of thing. Um, and, or could you apply it to less expensive items like, rubber stamps that you could have made on mass or buttons or t-shirts. And I just like take a step back and look at all of the, the possibilities there and, and how you can, you know, knowing that you're going to be taking that pay cut doesn't make sense for you to be wholesaling those products. So that's number one. Number two is that not all shops are created equal. And as I was saying earlier, like it can be very flattering and exciting when a shop approaches you at a craft market and says like, we would love to carry your stuff in our shop. Um, you know, do you wholesale? And I just want to encourage people to just like take a pause and, and, you know, be, be excited about that. But before diving in and being like, yes, like really do a little bit of research on that shop because not all shops are created equally. So what other kind of products does that shop carry? Are there price points in line with your price points? Is their whole, like their whole vibe in line with your stuff is like, they could carry your stuff and then just have, it would just sit on the shelves. So you want to make sure that it's a really good fit for 
you and your product that you like the owner consider reaching out to other makers who maybe sell their stuff in that shop are they getting paid on time um, all that type of stuff and I really recommend having um, some sort of wholesale agreement or your terms and conditions like locked down in advance before working with shops so that you're just sort of not that you need to have the upper hand but that you're in control so they're not making all of the rules and and it sort of conveys that you know what you're talking about and you're not one to be taken advantage of either. Not that shops are going to, but they, there are a few that just are not, you know, it's, it's, it's like a little bit of a bait and switch. You get excited about working with them and then the reality of actually working with them is not as great. You need to make sure you know what you're, what you're feeling. Do you accept returns? Things like that. You need to have all that stuff sort of lined out, lined out in advance um, and for each and every shop to come with your own, to come with your, yeah, your own ideas and rules. So number three is you need to really spell it out. The number of times that I have received um, emails from people saying like, hey, um, I'm a jewelry designer. I would love to, are you placing any orders? Are, are you ordering anything right now? Or like, is that something that you'd be looking for? It's just um, shop owners are really busy, multi-hat wearing people. And so, um, I think it's it's really important to have your email just answer all of the questions that they could potentially have without them having to come back to you and ask you more questions. So um, everything from like the basic, how much is this item to what is your production turnaround? How do you ship these? How, how are they displayed? Um, when you reach out to a shop for the first time, that email needs to cover all of the bases. So. I want that first outreach email to um, include an order sheet, a little introduction of why you think you would be a good fit for the shop. I want it to include a little line sheet, which is basically like a mini catalog that's very detailed with prices and pictures, um, an order form that makes it easy for me to order, and um, just, just really sum it up. So in that first outreach email, I just, leave nothing on the table, leave all the information there, put your catalog, put your line sheet so that if I'm having a moment where I, I see your email and you know, maybe it's 10 o'clock at night and um, you're not available by email at that time to answer any, like for me to send you any questions, but I'm feeling like buying something then I can do it. You don't need, doesn't need to have all this back and forth. You'd be like, hi, my name is Emily. I make this great line of soy candles. I've been admiring your shop online and I feel that they would be a great fit please find attached my catalog and my line sheet and order form. And I look forward to hearing from you. So just put, just make it as easy as possible so that people don't need to come back and ask you more questions. Um, so number four is that no one knows that you don't know what you're doing. So this goes back to the fake it till you make it kind of thing. And I heard somebody say the other day that that's not actually faking it till you make it is actually not a good idea, but I disagree. <laughs> So um, I recently become a fan of this of Marie Forleo, and she says everything is figure outable, and that is the truth. It's never been more easy for us to figure stuff out. We've got Google, we've got all of these like free apps that can help us do stuff. So if wholesaling is something that you want to do, then do the research necessary and build that toolkit of things like what I was saying earlier with the line sheet and your order form and your terms and all that stuff. Do that hard work, and then it is done. You can go back and edit it later if you want, but but get all that stuff that makes you look like a professional badass wholesaler and then, and you will be one. <laughs> That's really what, what I believe. Invest in your brand by having like great packaging, a solid logo, growing your presence online. Look to what other um, people that you admire are doing, other makers. I, I do not want you to copy. I want you to do you because you're the only one who can do that best. But to look at what other successful people are doing and to make that your own can be one of the best ways to know if you're on the right track. So if there's um, something that you feel like you could be doing better, then do it better before you're ready, before you go out into the world of wholesale. So nobody needs to know that you're not ready. Um, just get ready and then and go for it. Um, and then my last one is that this could be big. Like why you could be the next big handmade seller out there you could you could be that person you could be on the shelves of indigo if that's what you want or urban outfitters or i have friends who are handmakers who have you know sold to the hudson's bay company i don't know if that's where you want to go personally i like to go a little smaller than that but 
just, I want you to know that this could be a big deal and that, um, you need to consider what happens if, if that does happen or is the way you're producing your work sustainable? Um, are you selling prints or originals Is is, uh, your paper supplier going to be able to fulfill your needs as you grow, um, doing rush holiday orders, that kind of thing. And are you looking to the future and setting those goals for yourself? Because I feel like that's really the only way, well, for me, I'm pretty driven when it comes to chasing my, my dreams and things like that. And so, um, if you're ready to stop thinking small and ready to get into this, then it's time for you to, to think big and have all of those things in line so that you can you know, achieve that goal of wholesaling to whoever it is that you want to wholesale to. I love it. I, uh, I was going to mention the, um, like when I saw that you were going to talk about, no one knows that you don't know what you're doing. I was going to mention the Marie Forleo, everything is figure outable <laughs> thing. Cause I love that quote and I love, uh, did you read her book? No, I actually didn't read her book. No, I yeah. didn't, but I, I will. Cause I, I just, that's been the secret to my, all of my, any Same. success I've had is just like, figuring it out, you know, and I, and that's how I figured out wholesale. That's how I figured out Etsy was just by like creating a product and just going for it. And, and Mm -hmm. like when you were saying that you've made, um, maybe some mistakes with how you've spent money, that's just part, I just always think of that stuff as like my paid education because there's no, like, I'm not paying university fees (laughs) for this type of thing. If I, you know, waste a thousand bucks on ordering like hand lettered glassware, then I'm like, well, let's just chalk that up to my education. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) However, positive way. (laughs) I know that there are a lot of people who are probably not like that, who are not um, super scrappy. And like, that's not, that's not a thing that's, that's built into everybody. Not everybody has a business background. And like you said, a lot of creatives don't have mm-hmm. any of that business mm-hmm. kind of stuff. And so having somebody like you who has done all the, everything is figure outable and figured mm-hmm. it all out and now can just like package it into something like this yeah. is so valuable for a lot of people. So instead of having that education fund of all the glass yeah. where you spent your money on now you can actually just spend it on yeah, education sure, and skip all those steps yeah, exactly. and all this stress. I love that word scrappy. I feel like everybody that is just that is a way of life being mm-hmm. scrappy. I just yeah. I think it's like a really it's also a very like friendly, likable word and I just really have a lot of respect for people who figure it out. I can't tell mm-hmm. you I mean honestly maybe it's pushed me into getting to creating this course. And, and in the end, it is a really positive thing, but I can't tell you the number of time, emails that I get. I'm sure you get the same of people just like wanting me to answer their questions and yeah. like, it's all out there for them. It's all out there for them. And honestly, my answers may not be what they need to hear. Like if I feel like for everybody, their journey is different and yeah, it frustrates me so much when people just don't go and try to figure it out themselves first, mm-hmm. at least. Like, of course, ask for help. And that's what the community is about. And, and like, I, I'm not saying that at all, but at least, at least try. First. Yeah. Yeah. Google it first. Yeah. Just Google yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and now hopefully if they Google it, they'll come across your course. Yeah, I know I got to work so- on my SEO. <laughs> So, um, yeah, speaking of your course, can you tell us a little bit about what's in it and like, you know, if what people would get out of it, if, if what we just went through is stuff that they're interested in and they want to go deeper? Yeah, for sure. So at first I was feeling like, Oh, is this good? I don't know. Like, is this what people need? And then I tested it out on uh, a group of 13, like beta testers and we made it that much better. And now I can honestly say like, it's a wicked course. Like I feel, I don't feel like I'm, you know, sell it overselling it or anything it's it's amazing and well um, you know what i don't i don't doubt that just by looking at this freebie that you made for everybody oh, like yeah, really even oh, just the freebie is so good well i really like writing <laughs> writing is really my passion so um so it's everything the first the it's six modules the first one is like wholesale basics so like you the question you asked like what's the difference between wholesale and consignment little like basic stuff that some people will zip through but it's also about preparing your business for wholesale. So like a lot of people who are starting are like, do I need to register my business? Like, what about an HST number? Like, what are the lot? What about insurance? All this stuff like the, and and I, I hated figuring all that stuff out. And so I was like, it would be really valuable for me to just spell it out. Um, I should also mention, I know you have a wider reach. It's still very, um, it's all the same rules apply to the US, but as far as like the tax stuff and that kind of information, this is very specific to Canadians. Um, 
however the whole sale just the tax just the insurance and that kind of stuff the rest of it so like if if yeah if someone if someone outside of Canada bought it the only things that wouldn't apply are like the tax Uh, exactly the best part of it is I include all of the templates so like I find it really people are really intimidated when I say uh, like as, as a shop owner if somebody just reach out to me and say like I make these earrings. Would you like to carry them? And I reply and I say, can you send me your line sheet and order form? And it usually just like shuts them down. So a line sheet, like I was saying, is a, like a mini catalog. That's just brief description and a picture and like minimum quantities, all that stuff. And so I give templates for creating line sheets, um, templates for creating your order form in both like Canva and Excel. Um, we even do, um, email drafts, like I've written all of your emails for doing your outreach and your follow-up emails and everything. So it's just sort of takes all of that, the hard work stuff out of it, the hard non-fun stuff out of it. Terms and conditions, I give you like a template for that. So you would edit it um, based on the things that you care about with your product. So I feel like that is really where a lot of the value is. Mm-hmm. Um, it feels, I, I'm feeling really proud of it. It's like really comprehensive and easy to understand and um perhaps best of all is that by um once you've bought the the course you also are welcomed into a private group where everybody can help each other so for me always community is the best is the best resource and uh so i'm at first i was like do i want to do this do i want to manage another facebook group but i feel really passionate about um finding ways for creatives to be long-term successful and make money doing what they love, like for a living. Oh, what a dream, mm-hmm. right? Clearly. Yeah. And that's, yeah. I mean, you've empowered a lot of people to do that with your shop and your shows and now this course. And so that's mm-hmm. awesome. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, I will obviously link to all of that stuff okay. um, down below. And it, as this video is going live, it's available, right? For people. So, yeah. Uh, but yeah, I'll link to everything down below, but other than your course, can you tell people where to find you? What's the best place to find more of you? Uh, I live mostly on Instagram at cheerfully made. Um, and all of my links would be in my profile there. So um, yeah, cheerfully made.com cheerfully made on Instagram, Facebook, that's pretty cool. Much it. Or in person in Elmont. That's what I was going to say. Or, Mill Street. Yeah. Yeah. Except you can for, go to the shop. Uh, yeah. You can go to the shop. Amazing. Okay. Well, Emily, thank you so much for coming on here. I hope people got a lot out of it. I know they will. And if they go to your, to your course, they'll get even more. So yeah. appreciate your time and hopefully I'll meet you at a real in-person market yeah. sometime soon. That'd be really nice. <laughs> or whatever. All right. Okay, cool. I'll talk to you later. Bye. Bye.